Leading our news tonight, an 18-year-old male has been charged with willful mischief to property under Section 213 of the New Act 1966. Chief of Police Mark Chenery confirmed yesterday that the youth was charged after police investigations into the violent incident in Hiktavake of May of this year. The incident happened right after the island's general elections, which saw some people detained and questioned by the police after a house was burned to the ground. According to Chief Chenery, the arson that happened in Hiktavake has not provided any evidence to charge someone with and it will probably never happen. The accused will appear in the Niue High Court in November. Under Section 213 in the New Act 1966, if charged, he will face three years' imprisonment if the value of the damaged property exceeds $20 or six months' imprisonment if the property damaged is less than $20. Sixteen potential Chinese investors are arriving this evening on a business scoping mission that will see them visit the Nunu Farm in Vaya as well as the Old Reef Fish Factory. The Chinese Business Roundtable of New Zealand will visit Niue after Samoa and expected to stay until Thursday morning. Reef Group invested in Samoa with a Nonu Orchard and will most likely be one of the stops during the Chinese investors scoping mission. Previous reports that Reef has had Chinese investors for the Niue Nonu has also seen them open a factory in China. Nonu Juice, which is probably the only successful export from Niue over the previous few years, is predicted to increase export numbers for the reef group. After Niue, the group is expected to visit the Cook Islands before returning home. We will bring you more on this news story in our future news bulletin. Review of the state of the environment for New Way is not an easy feat as the Department of Environment, Water Division, Agriculture and SPREP explore ways in achieving a successful implementation plan for the island. Environment Officer from the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program or SPREP, Tepa Sawesi said the dependency of people on the environment does have implications. The state of environment, you are looking at the whole environment mm -hmm. and you're looking at changes that the environments have gone through time and trying to understand what those, cha what those changes have, uh, have been uh, affecting the state of, uh, of the society, mm -hmm. the needs of society, because we know that uh, the needs of society depends on the environmental resources we have and the quality of those resources. But through time, as we use those resources, the environment also started to change. So it's important to understand what those changes are and how those changes in the future will affect the way we live uh, and uh, the kind, the level of the quality of the environmental resources we use, water, land, uh, trees, and all of this, the air, uh, the coastline, the the reefs, all of this will change through time as we start, as we continue to extract and use those resources. EIA is it's a tool to assess the impact of, a, of an activity, like if you want to build a hotel. Certainly when you start doing the construction and you start operating the hotel, it will have uh, certain effects on its location, right? the waste you generate. Uh, the, visit, the visitors, the, uh, when you're constructing it, you'll be altering, you know, bulldozing and clearing the land. All of those effects need to be understood and uh, also you need to be able to uh, address any adverse uh, impact on your environment so that you're able to have a hotel but you have a nice surrounding, you yeah? have a nice front and all those and you are also able to uh, have a quality water supply you are able to take care of the waste that's what we mean by assessing impacts under EIA 
a decline in resources also needs to be addressed, says Mr. Sawesi. You're looking at things that have declined in quality. Uh, these are sort of the things that you, are, you have to be very mindful of when you are assessing the state of the environment. What are some of the uh, key environmental resources that you depend on and their quality and as well as their quantity, right? Is it declining? If it's declining in quality and quantity, then it's important for, for the policy makers to understand the situation and see whether the policy we have will improve, the, will fix the problem in the long term and as well as in the short term, will uh, increase the quality, improve the quality, uh, and also will uh, stop certain activities that is degrading the, the quality of the environment. Okay. Uh, it's important that you have then uh, evidence, data that will prove that the state of your environment is declining. You have to demonstrate and, uh, and show to your policymakers this is the situation. And it's important that you use language that are understood by them. Right? So use graphs, use pictures, use uh, some uh, aerial photographs to show the change. Right? There are certain uh, new technologies now that are available to demonstrate to them. So these are the kind of mechanisms you use. You use those tools to assess and communicate to them the situation. And also help them understand certain options that they can take to address the problem, to resolve the issues, as well as to enhance the quality of the environment. The challenge really for for the team that we're trying to form here is, uh, is trying to get everyone being part of it. Uh, and also uh, most of uh, the things we try to do because we're looking at the long term, uh, we are trying to balance that long term requirements with the short term needs of the, the country. Right? Uh, trying to bring that balance is really a challenge because it involves also sacrificing certain things that we know it's, uh, it's sort of uh, degrading the environment or it's not really helping restore the state of the environment. So some form, some level of sacrifice in lifestyle, in the, in the way we live, we need to do those sacrifices. That would be a challenge. Once we say, okay, uh, we need to ban certain items like plastic or that, that's not easy to put into effect because uh, as you know, many of our foodstuff, our drinks are now all in plastics. So when we make that change, it involves some, some level of sacrifice, some level of, uh, of, uh, of change into more environmental friendly activities. Okay, instead of plastic, you carry your, your shopping bag, your traditional shopping bag. Okay. Right? <laughs> I, I want to ask one more, one more question. Um, in Niwe's case, what is, I guess, the most, the most prominent area that, uh, that we need to address? Like, is it uh, the, uh, the rubbish dump, like you said, the plastic, or is it, uh, you know, the activities that uh, the farmers use in the, to, to, for their crops in their farm? Yeah, the groups have mentioned some of those. It's the bulldozing of lands, the clearings of lands. They see that if it's going to increase, if there's more agricultural activities to supply for tourism, for instance. And the uh, mode of it is using bulldozers to clear uh, the soil and the uh, vegetation. That's going to have some uh, detrimental effects in the long term in terms of vegetation cover here. The contamination of your groundwater lands, there's potential for that. There's increase in uh, polluted wastewater runoff. We need to address that if we are to protect the uh, the, uh, the quality of your groundwater lands, uh, the effects of uh, climate change, you know, the increasing cyclones, severe cyclones and all that. We need to look at ways to, to cope with that. And uh, also the impact on your coastline, the coral reefs. Yeah. And like we said, the waste problem is something I really need to reduce the kinds of waste 
that we can't deal with, uh, inorganics, hazardous waste, chemicals and all that, and increase composting of all of, uh, of organic materials. Mr. Sawisi said the key to a successful implementation plan is cooperation from all stakeholders in forming a strategy to address issues derived from environmental impacts for present day and for the future. This morning, potential workers into the workforce received advice on job opportunities that can assist in their development and future. Niue Chamber of Commerce, in collaboration with the Community Affairs Department, held the initiative with 17 unemployed youths. President of Niue Chamber of Commerce, Avi Rubin, said he was surprised that there were many young people unemployed. Five have already been placed and another 11 vacancies will be made available for them. Mr Rubin said they will work with the unemployed numbers to establish a medium of where their interests are before making a decision on how best to assist. Nui's Health Department is embarking on an initiative to identify the health status of the current population. Health staffs are in training this week with a data management officer from the World Health Organization here to set up the methodology and skills to conduct the step survey. Training this week will enable staff to get the right set of skills to conduct the survey that will focus on the health status of newest population between the ages of 25 to 64. WHO is facilitating this process, but the data that will be gathered will be valuable for the New Health Department in its endeavours to provide quality health services to the population of Niue. This is the first survey of its kind to be conducted in Niue and will enable the department to collect baseline data specifically on healthy living targeting non-communicable diseases. Public Health Representative Manila Norsa says that the STEP survey is a comprehensive process that will include the distribution of questionnaire surveys, taking measurements and also taking a finger prick blood test to test for sugar and cholesterol levels. This is a process which will take some time, but the department have staff that are being trained in preparation for this course of action. Consent and participation in this survey is voluntary and will be conducted after the national census sometime after September. On the 28th of June, at the official close of athlete entries for the 2011 Pacific Games, some 4,300 athletes had been registered by 22 Pacific Games associations. Niue has also closed the registration for athletes. 66 athletes and officials have been registered, but according to the General Secretary of Niskaga, Alan Tano Puliosi, the actual number could drop once official confirmation of athletes depart the island. The main problem at present is funding, which many sporting codes are finding hard to access due to limited sponsorships or too many fundraising events. The new government, who has funded sports representatives in previous years, has also reviewed their contribution and it will respond to efforts made by sporting codes as to how to assist. Premier Tokitalangi said government will await reports on previous funding transactions before making a decision and in saying so, government would like to encourage representatives to make an effort in assisting themselves. In the meantime, there are only a couple of sporting codes who have confirmed payments 100% to represent Niue. Those are our news stories that we have for you this evening. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.